It seems that Halloween haunt video projections are everywhere now. Just a few years ago, these were only seen in high-end commercial haunts or at Disney or similar attractions. But now these are available to the average home haunter like me. From fun and entertaining singing pumpkins, my personal favorite, to scary zombies clawing at the windows, video projections are becoming almost a necessary part of every home haunt. To take advantage of these videos, the haunter must also have a projector to play them, and this presents the problem, how to hide the projector from view. There are several great tutorials on the internet showing ingenious and clever ways to hide video projectors. When I started using video projections a few years ago, I looked at all of the ways to disguise the projectors that I could find. However, the ones that I saw were either too hard for me to build with my limited skill or were too costly for my limited budget. For my YouTube friends who have seen some of my previous posts, you know that I am all into cheap and quick for Halloween props. So I decided to apply this rule to my projector hiding issue as well. I have tried some different ways to hide the five or six projectors that I now use in the haunted forest but I was not really happy with any of them, so I just decided to build a very simple but effective prop to hide my projectors. Now, for all you haunters out there that think all props should be movie quality or hoodoo commercial haunts, this may not be your idea of good. But for home haunters like me, who don't do a commercial haunt but only provide some fun for about 150 or so friends and family who come out each year, I realized it really doesn't make much difference what the prop looks like as long as it serves the purpose it's meant for. At night, in the haunted forest, in the dark, this projector hider works just fine. And here it is, modeled here by my good friend and haunt partner, Skeleton Bob. Now, if you want to make this prop, plan on about three to four hours of work time, including the drying time for the paint, and about $30 in materials if you already have paint, screws, tape, and scrap wood. It will be around $40 to $45 if you have to purchase these materials. Okay, here are the materials you're going to need. A four shelf plastic storage shelf, uh, about $14 at Walmart. An eighth inch by four foot by four foot brown masonite, $7 if you can buy just a half sheet. A 4 by 8 sheet runs about $14 at Lowe's. A dollar store Halloween tombstone or some other decorative item to embellish the prop. A roll of duct tape or something similar. A piece of scrap quarter inch or half inch plywood at least 16 inches by 24 inch in size. One piece of scrap wood one quarter inch or half inch thick and about 8 inches long several three-quarter inch or longer screws, some exterior glue, a few two-inch long wood sheetrock or deck screws, and a can of gray paint. You'll need some tools to put this thing together with, a circle saw or a similar cutting tool, a rubber mallet, a drill and some drill bits, a screw driving bit or a screwdriver, a Dremel tool with a sanding bed or something similar to that, a nail gun and nails or something similar to that, a paint roller and tray, a paintbrush, some scissors, measuring tape, a straight edge, and a pencil. Now get started. Using the rubber mallet or something similar, assemble the plastic shelf unit per the instructions that come with the unit. Uh, you should start at the bottom and work toward the top shelf. My project had a four shelf unit, but you can also buy these in three shelf sizes. Whatever size is best for your project is what you should use. These shelves also come in white as well as black. Now you want to remove the ridges in the top shelf unit. Using the Dremel tool and a sanding bed or something similar, remove the ridges inside the four top shelf support holes. These ridges help make the assembly more sturdy and keep the supports from coming out. But we want the top shelf to be easily removed to get access to the projector. If you decide you don't need the top shelf to be removable, you can skip this step. Now you want to make the cover panels for the shelf. You make the front panel for the shelf, measure the width and height of the front of the shelf. 
My shelf front was 21 and a half inches wide and 48 inches tall. However, I wanted to be able to remove the top shelf, so the length of my measurement had to be below the top shelf. The measurement for my shelf front was 20 and a half by 45 and a half inches. Using the measuring tape and a straight edge, you want to mark and cut a line for this measurement on a 4x4 piece of masonite. Now cut out this front piece for the shelf. This will become the front of the tombstone. Now measure and cut out the side panels for the tombstone. You will be making two side panels, uh, one for each side. Again, my measurements may be a little different from yours depending on the size shelves you bought for your project. My side panels are 14 and an eighth by 45 and a half inches. Be sure to allow the eighth inch thickness of the front panel when making your side panel measurements. Now you want to install the front and side panels of the tombstone. Lay the shelves on their back and place the front panel on the shelves. Screw the panel in place. Be sure one screw goes through each of the shelf support holes and into a shelf support. Now place the shelves on one side and place the side panel of the shelves and screw the panel into place. Be sure one screw goes through each of the shelf support holes and into a shelf support. Now place the shelves on the opposite side and install the other side panel in the same manner. When you've completed this, all panels should be installed and there should be screws placed so as to keep the shelves from coming apart at the connecting supports. Now you want to cover the screw heads and the gaps between the panels. Use duct tape or some other similar material over the seams to close any gap between the front and the rear panels. You can use scissors to cut the tape smoothly. If you want a neater appearance, you can cover the seams to trim them with quarter inch or half inch styrofoam. And if you do this, use glue to secure the styrofoam to the panels. If you do use styrofoam, it will add some cost to the project. There will be a small gap of about one half inch between the inside of the front panel and the shelves. To make the prop more solid, you should place a half inch piece of scrap wood in the space and secure it in place with a two inch screw driven in from the front panel through the wood spacer then into the plastic shelf. Now you want to make a top for the tombstone. Measure the top of the shelf. Then you want to cut a wooden top for the prop from the scrap plywood. When you measure for this wooden top piece, be sure to allow enough on each side and on the front for the wooden trim pieces. I used half inch by four inch trim so my measurements were 24 inches by 16 inches. Then you want to cut out the wooden top. Now it's time to measure and cut the trim pieces for the wooden top. You'll have one trim piece for the front and two trim pieces for the sides, one for each side of the tombstone. My trim pieces measured two feet for the front and 15 and a half inches for the side. If you prefer, you can actually use half inch styrofoam for the top and the top trim. However, this will add some cost to the project. Also, your trim pieces for the top don't have to be four inches wide. I have made tombstones that are a little bit narrower than that on the side trim pieces. This is what the top of the tombstone will look once you cut all the pieces and put them together. It will be closed on three sides, but the back side will be open. Now you want to attach the wooden top to the top plastic shelf. Using screws, attach the wood top to the top shelf. Be sure to leave a little space around the shelf so it will slide on and off the top supports easily. Okay, now it's time to paint your prop. Using the paint roller, paint tray, and gray paint, paint the prop. Once the paint is dry, add the dollar store tombstone or whatever other embellishment you want to the front of the prop. Once it's done, you've got this tombstone prop to hide your projector, audio video, and sound equipment for your projection for your haunt. That's all there is to it. It's not professional grade and maybe not worthy of a commercial haunt, but we're not making a movie, building fine furniture, or charging guests for a walkthrough. It's just a Halloween prop for a party for crying out loud. So in the haunted forest, in the dark, 
And for the 150 or so visitors we have for our party each year, it's perfect to hide our projectors.